What's good, people? Ned Johnson, back in here with one more video. Now, it's been a while since I've talked a little hip hop related stuff on here, but um, there's a few things that I want to go over here. Rather, want to talk about with you guys, share with you. And before I get into it, make sure to like, hit that uh, like button when you like the video, subscribe to my channel, and when you ever want questions or topics or things you want to talk about, hit it in the comment section. So, anyways, let's get started. Now, for the last week, rather every single day when I go to work, I have like a certain playlist that I can uh, jam out to for like the duration of the whole day of the week. Or sometimes when I switch, want to switch to another playlist before I come out of lunch, I do that. Because most, because 100% of the time, I be jamming out to these hip hop beats. I just, it's just mainly R&B and hip hop. Now, with that being said, jamming out to certain hip hop joints and R&B joints. I was listening to uh, Nas this week, and the most song I've ever played out of the entire playlist was of course live nigga rap of course I replayed New York State of Mind everything Illmatic but also more of his ensuing albums throughout it wasn't just Illmatic because Nas that's the thing about Nas he even admitted himself that he was annoyed with that all of the nostalgia surrounding by that one legendary album which was his legendary debut uh, Illmatic back in 94 which basically took out the entire conversation of his ensuing albums there forward and whether or not they were classics and that's the problem because if you're just going to focus your energy on one album then what's the point of you being a fan and that's the problem with uh, certain people nowadays they just can't learn to at least stray away from one album and give the other ones a chance like review it over Love what you think of it. Do you think it's as good as Illmatic? Oh, of course, this project wasn't as good as Illmatic because Illmatic was like the standalone above all, like the Bible of hip hop, as we all know it. But you also have to uh, give us ensuing classics a chance. Like it was written, I Am, uh, God's Son, Stillmatic, and Street Disciple. Those are some banging joints, you know what I'm saying? And even the Lost Tape projects, you know what I'm saying? And those have some like hidden lost material that would have been on his um, previous albums throughout the years and whatnot, but they got shelved in the vault, but then he gives us the lost tapes. Basically giving us like a, a lot of joints that he hidden away in the vault throughout the years. <clears throat> Excuse me. And those are some slamming joints. Now, I was listening to Live Nigga Rap. Out of the uh, Illmatic, no, 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 out of the It Was Written album, which is still a great album, my dude. Just as close to the level of Illmatic. It was a classic album, let's be real. It had some great joints with um, a couple of people, especially DJ Premier, especially that song, I Gave You Power, that was slamming. And it was dark, grimy, gritty, it shows you the genius of that. So, I'm on a roll right now. About to head back to the dentist with my mom. So, yeah. I was listening to Live Nigga Rap, and it was undoubtedly one of the hardest beats I've ever heard in my life. Like, I never gave it, like, a real uh, legitimate listen, because I heard it a couple times throughout my life. I just didn't know what it was. But I was watching this uh, video on this one particular guy on YouTube. His name is Deterta, Canadian hip-hop YouTube fan, who knows this hip-hop shit. And he he brought up live nigga rap, and brought up exactly who made the who made the beat for that song, in particular, and how it came about, you know. And that beat was one of the most insane beats I've ever heard in my life, dude. Like dark, grimy, slamming type of shit that you hear throughout the years, you know. And that was one of them. And it was produced by Havoc. Of the legendary hip hop group Mob Deep, you know, with him and the late Prodigy, R.I.P. the Prodigy, you know, and Havoc is like one of the most underrated producers 
that the world could ever think of, you know? And he doesn't get enough credit for that because he gets shout, overshadowed by the mainstream producers that just like, man, it's a absolute garbage, you know what I'm saying? But some certain mainstream producers can tend to hit the mark. So it's just, you know, you have to find the right mark and the right creativity and the formula to make such a great hip hop beat, you know? And that's what it's all about finding the right formula and just don't like toss it in there as if it's like you're trying to make a hot cooked meal and just throw a McDonald's Big Mac beef patty on there which is not even that good it has to be well done and made from scratch you know what I'm saying it's, that's what it's all about and getting the right ingredients onto there so with that being said the purpose of this video is that um especially for this early part is that it's hard to make such a beat as that song and any and every other single great hip-hop song that we're accustomed to listening to throughout the entire course of history you know it's hard to do that because when you think of hip-hop producers you try to come up with arguably the best top 50 producers in hip-hop history and that's hard to do so because there's like so many amazing producers out there. I mean, you can think of like the five, ten best hip hop producers right at the top of your head, and then after that, it gets tricky because there's so many other greats that you probably haven't listened to or like, you know, try to put them in the right order. And that's normal because it's really hard to do so. It's tricky because. For example, like in the top five, top ten, you can think of DJ Premier, who is arguably the greatest hip-hop producer of all time, The RZA, Dr. Dre, Jay Dilla, rest in peace to Jay Dilla, uh, Mad Lib, Swizz Beats, Timbaland, and, uh, yeah, and Kobalozua. See? See how I stopped right there? It's because it's hard to come up with the ones that are coming right after hell. No. Rather fact, I'll go a few more. Like, Q-Tip, you know, rapper Q-Tip from A Tribe Called Quest, not many people know that he was one of the greatest producers ever as well. So yeah, you, have, you can think of DJ Premier, RZA, Dr. Dre, J Dilla, RP again, uh, Mad Lib, uh, Q-Tip, Pete Rock, Eric Sermon, Swiss Beats, Timbaland, so, that's like top 10 wise. And then after that, it gets tricky. Yeah, you can even throw Kanye West under there. And how much of a critically acclaimed producer uh, Kanye West is. Even though he could be real timid as a rapper. And we all know how we view him as like a human individual right now. But that's neither here nor there. I'm talking about his work mainly as a producer. And he's made some great joints. But... Like I said, it's just hard being like a, a premiere, a RZA, uh Pete Rock, Eric Sermon, you know? There's a lot of great producers out there, you know what I'm saying? And you also think about Large Professor and uh, Havoc and DJ Muggs, who is a white producer, but is top, hands down top 50. And not many people will listen to him because, you know... It just focus on the uh, white back pepper dirty type of shit in a way but as you, if you have some creativity you'll be considered you know and it's hard to come up with, with a list such as a top 50 producer says because there's so many great others like whereas the top 50 rappers of all time list is basically clearly obvious or stating or and how people can be biased or whatnot you have to be really accurate on that one. But the top 50 producers list, it's really hard. So, with that being said, it'd be hard to figure out exactly who are among the top 50. But outside of the top 5, top 10 that I just named for my, for my list, for my top 10, like, there's so many other great producers. It's just a, a lot to take in and a lot to consider. So... Like, what else can we do, you know? So, yeah, that's the point I want to get off on uh, this hip-hop uh, beat-making shit that we're accustomed to listening to throughout the days. Because I even discussed this with uh, one of my co-workers uh, earlier this week. It's hard to... Oh, shit. It's hard to... 
Um, sorry about that. Uh, it's hard to make such as slamming hip hop beats that we're listening to throughout the years. You know? Hell. It's just what it is. You know? My mother had like a couple of uh, hip hop albums uh, in the collection for a while. But what really made her get into hip hop was Jay Z. She even said that herself. Jay Z was like the man in the mid to late 90s. And rightfully so. Because you think of him, you think of Nas, you think of Tupac Shakur, and a couple of others. Matter of fact, I remember she had in my um, Tupac review video, she did have the All Eyes on Me project. She, I think, didn't you have like a couple Jay Z projects too? Yeah. Yeah, she had like a couple Jay Z projects and whatnot, so. Yeah. It's just hard making such classic material such as those, and it has to be like the right beat production and whatnot, because the beat is always the foundation of a classic hip hop song. So, and I apologize if I'm going off topic, but uh, the point is, it's hard to make such as one that's going to be slamming, and that's going to be creative, innovative, dark, rhyming, sonically driven, everything. It's just hard to do so. And it's just hard to be among the greatest elite, and it's hard to put together top 50 producers of all time. Hell, even the best producers of this trap rap era, that I, I can only think of a few. I think of Pierre Bourne, Metro Boomin, hell, even DJ Mustard. Those are the three ones that I know, even though DJ Mustard isn't really trap like that. He's just California boom, like kind of boom bap beeping, you know what I'm saying? That, that's his own style. And another thing about Boom Bap. Boom Bap has always been like, you know, the real backbone of hip-hop beat making. You know what I'm saying? In the 90s, it was like legit Boom Bap, hard-hitting, fun-loving, enjoyable, sonically driven, all that. You think of uh, a tribe called Quest Projects. They're Boom Bap oriented. You think of Nas throughout his entire career. He always relies on that Boom Bap style courtesy of DJ Premier. And DJ Premier is like, to me, the king of boom bap. You know what I'm saying? And he always knows how to make it sonically driven. He knows how to evolve with boom bap over time. And he has like a whole crazy disc long discographies in his resume. You know? Even the RZA. Even though RZA's like much more old school cinematic oriented style. But he's still boom bap related. And that time, boom bap, it has to be evolved with the right material. But right now, it's just like in a dead state because it really hasn't, like, you know, evolved properly throughout the year. So. And it's just what it is. So, yeah. But that's my whole point. It's hard to make uh, great beats. It's hard to be a DJ Premier, a RZA, etc., etc. And it's hard to put together a great 50, top 50 producers list of all time. So, it is what it is. And another topic I want to talk about is Lauren Hill. First, congratulations to Lauren Hill. Her only album, her only album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, released back all the way back in 1998. Her album got a uh, diamond certification earlier this week, making her the first ever hip-hop female artist to have her project go diamond. And even though that project was more R&B oriented, it had some hip-hop joints on there. Because before Lauren uh, really transitioned into an R&B singer, because she does have a great singing voice, she was spin some fire lyrics. Especially, uh... <laughs> couple joints in uh, an early career with uh, the Fugees, especially their first album. Hell, my mother's favorite joint was that um, that Nappy Head remix version where her verse, <laughs> her verse was slamming. Let's be real, it was slamming. Hell, this was my mother's favorite joint as well. 
If we could play it right now, we would see what I'm talking about. But yeah, yeah we'd be bumming that shit sometimes when it comes on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. She knew how to spit lyrically. She's more conscious, more innovative. Rhyme schemes, wordplay, and the delivery itself. She just knocked it off the park. And she's one of the most underrated lyricists ever. So, even though people call her crazy, and based on what we've seen throughout the years, we can pretty much say that. But what really struck me is what she says. She's crazy, but she's crazy about her music. And she takes her craft really seriously. So It's just sad that she only put out one album throughout her whole career, but you know, it's never too late to make another one, especially at this day and age, you know? It'd be really great. But, yeah, congratulations to Lauren Hill. Really deserves it. And I think she was like the ultimate standard for female hip-hop artists to go. I mean, yeah, there's her, MC Light, Queen Latifah. You could say salt and pepper and whatnot. But, like, Lauren Hill was like the standalone, above all, creative um, artist that she was, you know? And still is to this very day. So, congratulations to her on that. And, uh, that's all I have for today's video, so, yeah, so, it's, it's, it was, like, a little bit longer on one subject that I talked about earlier, but, yeah, that's just, there's a lot to talk about, and with that being said, that's all I have for today, if you like the video, like the video, want to see more of my content, hit that subscribe button, if you want to keep pace when I'm going to upload my next joint, hit that bell com button, you'll get notified, and what do you think about this topic, like, what do you, what do you consider among the top 50 hip-hop producers of all time, like, let me know what you think, you know, like I said, it gets tricky, but over time, when you uh, listen to everything, every single one of their joints, and put it all together, you make a final list, it just really gets tricky, outside of the top five, top ten, top ten you can think of, it just gets tricky, you know, and it's just what it is, so, anyways, that's all I have for today, I'm Nick Johnson, favorite hip-hop YouTuber, and I'm out, y'all, peace.